it's much different than when you and I graduated from college because you were expected to go get a job with a good company and spend your entire career there, retire from them. And, and those days are gone, right? What is it? The average person spends four years on a job. And I think it's actually trending to be even shorter than that. Hello, and welcome to the Hire Yourself podcast. We publish episodes twice a week about franchising and business. Each Monday, we'll release a 30-minute episode where we dive deep into a topic. Thursdays are our shorter, lighter episodes where we will discuss things like business resources or topics of personal growth. I am one of your hosts, Pete Gilfillan, and I'm joined with my business partner, Nat Truitt. And together, we have every experience in business and franchise ownership. We have worked hard over the years to realize our dreams and control our own destinies. Our experience will help you become a better business owner and franchisee so that you can live life on your own terms. Well, Nat, I thought we'd talk about something really cool. Uh, We had a very special day in our house this week. We received our last two tuition bills for our uh, both our uh, seniors in college. And oh, nice. my wife and I are doing the happy dance. We're all excited. I mean, we've been writing checks for four years, two of them in school at the same time. It's It's been killing me. And I've heard friends talk about this tuition and getting through it and writing that last check. And, and I thought, holy cow, it's finally here. I'm, you know, I don't have to write these checks anymore. So it, 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 uh, it got me thinking a little bit about college and tuition and stuff like that. So I thought we'd spend some time chatting about it today. Sound good? Sounds good. My kids are a little bit younger, and I know that um, I probably can't save enough money for college, but would love to talk about this. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Start saving now. It is absolutely amazing uh, what it costs you to get these kids through school. And you talk about high costs. I don't know if you read the other day, University of Chicago just announced tuition and room and board over $100,000 per year. Oh, my gosh. $400,000 education. That is just crazy to me. I suspect they give a lot of it back in merit, but that leads us to the, the whole thing of this increased cost and the value proposition with going to college. You know, these, these, a lot of these kids, uh, they don't have the opportunity. I know you're, I don't think your parents helped pay for college, right? No, I remember that was kind of, my dad owned his own company. And so I always worked all through high school and basically every Saturday and it was very clear that that money, you know, like, hey, you're going to have to pay for your own college. So, he, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not easy either, no matter how you, which route you take. You now, I think with college tuition going up like six or seven percent every year, more than inflation, these kids don't have the opportunity to work their way through school, right? With tuition at thirty five, forty thousand dollars a year, it's it's crazy to think that it's going to cost you one hundred and forty, hundred and sixty, hundred eighty thousand dollars to get through college. And I'm just wondering, with all this debt, kids uh, borrowing to go to college because they can't afford just to work their way through it, that I believe is going to be a debt crisis we're going to have here in the United States is how they're going to be able to manage that debt. Yeah, at least with the housing crisis, you know, people typically had a house. Now with the college debt, it's not like you have, you know, something that you can go point to. Yeah, my my daughter, who's going to be graduating in May, she's going to go off to PA school. And it's a two and a a half year commitment. And basically, it's $100,000 worth of tuition plus living expenses. So she's going to have to take $100,000 of loans out. And believe it or not, they'll let her do it. Uh, But it's, it's going to set her back so far. It's not something we can help pay for. We've helped with undergrad, but grad school, we're not going to be able to pay for. And I, I just... I started to explain to her the interest and how long it was going to take her to pay, pay it off. And she was kind of shocked at, the, at how expensive the, the payments are going to be each month for a very long time. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, too, because there's not necessarily, well, with PA, there probably is a pretty good guarantee that she can get a job when she gets out. But, you know, I've seen a lot of, I have a lot of friends whose kids, it seems like they graduate and they're not necessarily getting a job that even requires a college education. So one thing, I almost feel like there's a trend where sometimes like the, um, you know, the son or daughter's coming back and actually working in the family business and helping out with that. So that's, I think, kind of one thing that's kind of, you know, it's kind of nice to be able to have that as an option for your kids. So at least they can come back and get a good paying job uh, in the family business, maybe take it over one day. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I do believe we're in a gig economy. 
right? Where yeah. people got side gigs and they're, they're creating their own opportunities. And it's much different than when you and I graduated from college because you were expected to go get a job with a good company and spend your entire career there, retire from them. And, and those days are gone, right? What is it? The average person spends four years on a job. And I think it's actually trending to be even shorter than that. So this idea of this gig economy and people creating their own opportunities, franchising can certainly do that, right? I, uh, I think of about a a young man I'm working with, he just graduated from a university and he's, he's going to go and invest in a franchise. He's about ready to do it right now. His parents are going to help fund or capitalize the franchise. So here he got his college degree and he's always wanted to own his own business and, and he's going to invest in a franchise. And it's a way in which he can kind of, instead of trying to get that uh, job is go create your own opportunity. Yeah, that's super interesting. I know I bought my first franchise when I was 29. Um, so I had been working for a while, but I do think, you know, <laughs> that there's that old saying that um, youth is wasted on the young, right? So I feel like, wow, I was like, I had a lot of energy and got a lot done back then, you know? So I, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if some of these guys in their 20s did great with their own business, especially when you have a little bit of structure in place and kind of role modeling and mentorship and all that from the franchise or the parent company and the other owners in the system and all that. So it could be kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's like entrepreneur light. It just makes it a little bit easier, especially when you don't have that bandwidth of maybe working for a corporation for a long time, the leadership skills, the business acumen, and it maybe fills that gap a little bit. I just wonder if there's going to be a tipping point between, you know, going to college and spending the 150 to $200,000 in total tuition versus going and investing in a business. I, I got to think at some point, you know, if your parents said, listen, we'll give you $160,000 for college <laughs> or we'll give you $160,000 to see the business, that right. gets a little bit compelling, right? Yes, that's super interesting. I think there's so much, so many opportunities right now, too, to kind of be creative and do something on the side. And kids, you know, they just learn, they learn and adapt so fast when you see like, you know, my kids, they're like on Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok and all this stuff. I don't necessarily know what it is all about, <laughs> but, uh, you know, they're, they're on there, they're doing things, they're getting followers. And I think it's just, it's interesting to associate with, with, uh, all these different age groups and see, learn from them a little bit too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I, with my business and I've been an entrepreneur for what now, 10 years, what I've been trying to do with my kids is to teach them about being an entrepreneur, give them some of those skills or at least expose them to it so that they can lose, use those experiences or at least understandings as they go forward and maybe have a chance to have their own business or maybe even sometime uh, join me with my business. Yeah. Super interesting. I know. I think I was telling you a couple of weeks ago how my oldest son is kind of observing uh, you and me doing the podcast and he is kind of busting my chops, like teasing me about it. But, you know, I told him, hey, you know what, Pete and I are putting ourselves out there and uh, we're having fun and uh, we're helping a lot of people. I think it's just great, you know, as a dad to be able to kind of role model going outside my comfort zone and, you know, just chipping away and trying to make a difference each day. Yeah. Well, I'm waiting for your boys to create that business uh, with the drone, right? Uh, where yeah. they can, uh, you know, do things for realtors or or inspect uh, gutters or whatever it is. So yeah. they, I'm sure are going to be great uh, entrepreneurs going forward. Thanks for listening to this episode of Hire Yourself Podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, give us a rating, and leave a comment on iTunes or whatever podcast listening app you use. Hire Yourself offers some great resources on our website, HireYourself.com. And if you would like our content more regularly, follow us on LinkedIn or Facebook. We look forward to you listening again to help you on your journey of living life on your own terms. 